movie is sad. Uh, not that he's saying it's some great film, but it's probably one he saw when he was eight years old and was like, dude, it was awesome, or so my eight-year-old memory leads yeah. me to believe. And it, there's so many of those movies out there, though, that you're just like, back in your memory, you're like, all dogs go to heaven, A plus, sir, that was amazing. And, and then you watch like, it again, you're like, this the stupidest fucking movie that's ever existed. Actually, I have a weird memory that's attached to that. I never saw it until it came out on VHS. Oh, yeah. Um, because uh, I was going with my sister, my dad was taking me, and these three neighborhood boys, they're all brothers, they're all just brothers. And um, Chris was my age. And Joel was my sister's age, and then there was Clark, who was the oldest. Sister? The older sister. Older sister. And um, and so we're all getting into my dad's like 1984 Volvo, right? And um, and I'm I'm double buckling with Chris in the trunk, and I'm so excited. And <laughs> and so we're two tiny little kids, and we're just double buckling. I reach back to get the the seatbelt, and I'm looking at Chris, and I'm like, Clark gets in the back, slams my finger oh. in. The seat, and there's oh. the board. And uh, you see that? You see how it kind of hangs? Oh, out? Jesus, that's idiot. And uh, look at my thumb, though. Same thing. And it, it was it hanging off like like the top part, like that, like a thread. My dad had so all the, it. We were flip him off to give him a close up. We were on our way <laughs> to see all dogs go to heaven. And we never made it. We were on our way there, and all the guys had to get out of the car. My dad had to drive me to the emergency clinic. We had to stop along the way so he could kind of drive me because he was so like, there's so much blood. And I was like, <laughs> Dad, what oh, are God, you Clint. doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's disgusting. <laughs> and then, um, and then I so I had to see that when I. That's yeah, uh, that, that could have forever changed your life, though. That could have been your like childhood boyfriend. So no, no right? Was fucked up. And he's like, now I can't fucking talk to her. That's embarrassing. Sorry, my brother like almost took his finger tip off. That sucks. Are you doing okay, Claire? Well, my finger was half fucking hanging off. So, so wait, a, li a little bit of hatred for your entire family. I don't care who you're, it was. You're kind of cool, but fuck your family. I kind of have this like, that lingering kind of touch and like wonder where it's all your business. I think everybody Maybe has some of those. Yeah. But anyway, so what I was originally saying is like your memory kind of just builds up this movie into proportions that it can't live up to in reality and probably ask an experience like that. You'll probably see the weird, like, slow motion, you know, ski moves and, like, helicopter. Get a <laughs> wow, I got bro. giant goggles on. I don't know. Banging chicks on the ski lift. So. Nobody. So, wait, you were going to, I said that, and then you were like, <laughs> oh. Okay, so. I do have a story that's very relatable. So as a kid, I lived in Virginia, a place called Manassas, Virginia. I lived there for two years. This is uh, um, when my dad was still alive. So right before he passed away, we lived in Manassas, Virginia. And I'm gonna go on record saying this is the whitest neighborhood ever, ever to exist. Can you say water out later here? You're freaking me out, stop. Cause people were like, y'all know how to make tortillas? Like, what the fuck are we, the neighborhood beaters? Of course we know how to make them. <laughs> what the fuck is this? You buy them at a store? What is this shit? I swear to Christ, we were the, within the span of like, I'd say four miles in a big circle. Oh, hey it was to the point where none of the kids would play with us. Like, because we were, I'm fucking serious, because we were Mexican. There was a lot of racist, I don't want to get into that, it's a bad time. But anyway, we lived out there and there was one movie, we always hung around with the kids across the street, and they were named Matthew and Aaron. And they were from fucking Texas. Hey. So they had that, hey y'all, how you doing? They were from Dallas. And Big hair, small bay. Oh. <laughs> so you're a Texan, you can say that shit. Except from Austin. Well, if I say that, they'd be like, you're an asshole. You're like, oh, you're from Austin, fuck you. You can say that <laughs> Texan rivalry. But, so like, we always hung out with them, and they had a movie called Tommy Tricker and the Stamp Traveler. And I swear to Christ, this was the greatest movie that ever existed. We literally, it was to the point where we ended up buying it. And me and my sister were so fucking addicted. I swear to God, I found my old uh, uh, photo album, and I have my stamp collection that that movie got me into. I started collecting wait, stamps. Wait, wait, so what was this movie about? All right, this the, movie. They collect stamps. Yeah, all right. Really exciting. No, 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 hold on. They, all right. These kids collect stamps. And this guy, this like his, this kid's dad, 
All right, all right, hold on. Let me set this up perfectly. Because if I mess it up, you're like, that's... What? So what happened was, is this boy and his sister were really big into collecting stamps. Because of their dad. Their dad was a huge, like, you know, like, yeah. mint condition, very valuable stamp. So, you know, they're like, oh my god, we got this rare kind of stamp. You know, they were just really yeah. into it. And the whole, for some reason, the whole school was into the stamp collecting. It was like the thing to do. <laughs> and there was a kid named Tommy Tricker. And he was like the bully, you know. And he would make he would make fake copies of stamps and sell them to kids. That was like he's so evil. Oh my god. So, so I'm telling you, as an adult, it sounds fucking ludicrous. But as a kid, this was the coolest shit that ever existed. So he ends up selling this stamp to I can't remember. He had a fucking weird ass name. And <laughs> Dirk Diggler, stamp collector slash porn star. <gasps> Let me just stamp this postage all over. Gonna <laughs> run your meter up. Let me lick your stamp, baby. Make it stick. Anyway. <laughs> we could keep going. We people. could. We could keep going. And uh, so, anyway, so this whole thing comes out while Tommy Tricker ends up getting in this dude's house and steals this valuable stamp. And it's called The Man in the Mask. And there's only like three of them that exist. And it was his dad's stamp. So the kid's like, holy fucking shit. Tommy Tricker's an asshole. He stole my dad's stamp. I don't know what to do. Well, no, what happened was he traded the stamp for his other. Like, dude, this is a, there's only one that exists, and I got it. Well, uh, it was a fake. Like, oh, no. So he, he's like, I got the man in the mask. So he takes it to the stamp collecting store and sells the man in the mask. Well, the guy's like, oh, I'll give you 50 bucks for it. So he's like, all right. You know, 50, 50 dollars. Bucks, that's like a million when yeah. you're a kid. So he sells it. Well, the kid finds out and he goes to the store and he's like, dude, that is a, like a fucking rare stamp. I got to get it back. He's like, oh, I can't give it back because I already sold it. So he's, and you know, like the daughter, you know, the little girl's like, oh, crying and shit. He's like, the fucking kid's crying, man. Give her something to go away. So I give her this package. And in this package is this book about stamp collecting. And they end up like, you know, they fucking get all pissed and the kid throws it. And it kind of like, it's a hardcover, so it's snap, you know, the yeah. bending snaps. Well, there's a letter that was put inside the book. And this letter is written by this guy who like was a big stamp collector. He was like, I, I've, I'm telling you, it's fucking insane. Paul, how <gasps> dare you yawn? <gasps> This is compelling shit. This is stamp collection at its greatest. Like I said, as a kid, I was so in love with the movie. But, oh, it, gets it was Virginia. He's excused. It gets fucking crazier and crazier. So they read this letter and it's like, hey, I'm so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. My stamp collection is hidden. You need to find it because you found my letter, blah, blah, blah. So these kids are like, let's do it. So they end up, I swear to fucking God, this is a real movie. And nobody believed me. So they, they do the stupid, they say the stupid saying, do this weird little dance, and end up getting put on a stamp. And they have to mail, they, the kid who got put on the stamp has to be mailed to a certain address. Well, he gets mixed up in the fucking mail, ends up going to China. Of course. Yeah, of course, because, you know, you go to China. When you dig a hole in the playground. <laughs> you don't need a stamp for that shit. So then he ends up going there. And then fucking, they figure out in China, like, oh, you gotta do some weird thing with a dragon. I don't know. Then they send him off and he ends up in fucking Australia. Well, he, basically it comes down to him meeting the granddaughter of this dude. And she's like, yeah, I totally know where his fucking hidden stash is. You know, so I was like, really? So hidden. Because, you know, because I guess in the hidden stash was another man in the mask. So fucking, you know, this dude, they end up finding it. Tommy Tricker somehow figured it out too. And I swear to God, this movie exists. And fuck, I'm not kidding. So they end you up. You couldn't make this shit up. Well, either I couldn't. I swear <laughs> to God. So either way, he got the fucking stamp back. Tommy Tricker found out. They ended up being friends. Ha ha. Well, the guy, the stamp that he got back, that was in the dude's collection, didn't because the whole thing was the original stamp is called the Man in the Mask. Yeah. Well, it was the fucking you know guy hanging in the mask on the uh, on this giant boat. Well, that's what made it rare, is there was only three guys. Well, this one didn't have the guys, so it was like super fucking rare. And then they're like, look at his case, and it's the dude's initials who had the stash, blah, blah, blah. Here's a side fact, and I did not know this, because throughout the whole movie, they sing this stupid fucking song. It's so annoying, and it's sung by this kid, and you're like, this song is fucking stupid. You know who sang that song? Rook 